Hey, what's going on? This is Vagabond Blues. This is my first video. I just wanted to kind of give you guys an intro to Pro Tools. I've been getting a lot of questions lately uh, asking if I could show people how to just kind of get them familiarized with Pro Tools. And uh, I thought I'd post a video for y'all. Uh, real quick, I just want to throw a quick plug in there. Uh, if you want to check out any of my work, you can check me out at myspace.com slash vagabondblues. That's V-A-G-A-B-O-N-D-B-L-U-E-Z. Um, with that being said, let's move on. All I've done here is I've launched Pro Tools. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new session. So I'm going to come up here to File, New Session. I'm just going to call the session Test. Um, down here you've got your, your, um, your file type, your sample rate, and your bit depth. Um, I always use WAVE files. It doesn't really matter what you choose to use. I use WAVE. It's more industry standard. Um, I like to set my, my sample rate to 48K and my, dip, uh, my bit depth rather to 24-bit. Um, if your computer is a little sluggish and has a hard time keeping up with recording and stuff like that, I would suggest maybe setting your sample rate to 44.1 and your bit depth to 16-bit. Um, you might not want to do that. You're telling yourself, oh, I don't want to do that because the quality is not going to be good. Um, you'll still be all right. It's, you know, 44, 1, 16 is uh, actually CD quality, so you should be in, in good shape. You do lose a little bit of overhead, and that's actually a little more technical. I'm not going to go into that. Um, but for all intents and purposes, for an LE setup, um, 44, 1, 16 bit should be fine for all of your, uh, your like, mixtapes and uh, if you're doing any kind of commercial spots or anything like that, you're good to go. So we'll go ahead and click on Save here. Um, I'm going to select that, and I'm going to overwrite it because I already had a file named Test. Uh, I'm going to close out a session that's in here. Okay, so we're creating the, the new session Test right now. Um, and you get a blank screen to begin with. Uh, so what we're going to do is the first thing we need to do is we need to... Um, add tracks to the session so we're gonna come up here to track and click on new you can also hit control shift N if you're on PC or or uh, I think it's Apple control N or control shift N something like that on on apples um, let's say that we're uh, that here's a scenario re we're recording a vocal um, and maybe he's gonna do one overdub so we're, we need two vocal tracks. So what I've done is I've typed in two. Um, all vocals should be recorded in mono. So I've selected mono and we're using an audio track. And then I'm going to hit the plus sign over here because I want to go ahead and add two uh, auxiliary imp aux channels. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put two in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make these stair... Uh, I'm going to go with mono for now, and I'll tell you why here in a little, little bit. Sorry to confuse you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a, uh, oh, by the way, this is this is going to be an aux track. So click on uh, the drop-down menu and make that aux input. And lastly, I'm adding a, uh, a stereo master fader. So once I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and... So once you've created your new tracks, this is uh, the screen that you'll have up. Uh, I just want to kind of give you a brief overview of what you're looking at here so you're familiar with uh, with what is going on. Uh, right here you've got your timestamp. Uh, to the right of it you've got your transport where you've got you know record, play, stop, um, back, fast forward, all that good stuff. On the left here you see your audio tracks that we've just created. So we've got audio 1 and audio 2 and we've got our two auxiliary uh, input tracks and our master fader at the very bottom um, of course you've got your record or arm switch um, you've got solo and mute buttons um, and all of these have you have these individual controls on each of these of these channels um, what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna hit control equal that's a shortcut to get to the uh, to flip between the edit window and the mix window this is the mix window here um, and Basically, you've uh, this corresponds to the last window window we're looking at, um, the edit window. As you see, we've got audio one, audio two, uh, aux one, aux two, and the master fader. 
um, just to reference uh, audio 1, audio 2, aux 1, aux 2. So everything is corresponding and in order. Um, first off, what I want to do, I just want to go ahead and uh, I want to name these tracks. That way you guys know uh, what I'm referring to when I say vocal track or reverb track, track or compressor, etc. Um, all I did was I double clicked on audio 1, I double -click, uh, clicked on the track name and we're gonna go ahead and call this Vokes and you can click on next and I'm gonna call this uh, Vokes uh, I don't know double <laughs> and then I'm going to call my aux track the first aux, tra aux track I'll call a compressor and let's make the second one a verb cool we've done it right, there we go so as you see we've labeled our tracks um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and show you what all of this stuff is here on your channel strips this is where a lot of people get confused and overwhelmed um, and there's really not that much to be afraid of um, basically you've got three main sections of each of these channels anything you do in any of these sections here like on this is one strip here this is your second strip. Anything you do on this first strip is going to correspond to the first channel, um, and and so forth. So, you know, if I if I do anything on this strip here, it's going to directly affect Vokes double. So, um, this first section, this dark gray area, is your plugin inserts. This is where you add your effects, you know, time based or dynamic effects, uh, your EQs, um, and so forth. The um, right below it in the light gray area. These are this is your bus send section. So if I need to send a signal um, to my reverb effect, I would do it here by sending. Uh, I would click on the the drop down menu and I would bus signal out of track one through bus one. Uh, we'll get back to that in just a second here. Uh, below it is your input and output assignment for each channel. Um, so for my vocal mic, my, I have my microphone hooked up into channel one on my M box. So uh, naturally, I would I would click click on in one. Whoops, I'm sorry. I would click on in one, and uh, you would select interface and in one. That's preamp or interface one. Um, if you've got your microphone plugged into interface 2 or your second preamp on your inbox or if you've got multiple uh, like say you have a command 8 um, or something to that effect and you've got a microphone plugged into interface 4 you would come down here and select mic or line 4 um, further than that um, below the input section is your output section and by default everything goes out to your uh, master stereo uh, fader which is right here so we don't normally need to touch that unless we're doing some more advanced routing stuff um, let's go back to the bus send um, on this vocal track I'm gonna go ahead and arm the vocal track right now just uh, so you see that there is a signal coming from the microphone um, as you can see right here this is your your uh, VU meter 